What is going on you guys? It is the Talking Sasquatch and welcome back to the channel. As you can see from all the stuff going on in the background, I've been super busy over the past few weeks, but I've really wanted to make this video. As a quick reminder, just wanted to let you know that there is a giveaway going on in the Discord right now. So if you haven't already joined, if you haven't already joined the Discord, hop in there. I'll have more details at the end of the video. Now, when I grew up, there was this place called the mall that people would go to, and there actually used to be stores that were open inside them. Recently, I've been into a mall and there's just nothing left anymore. It seems like nobody really goes. But back in the day, it was the place to be. Now, I remember going there after school or going there on the weekends and just kind of hanging out for a while, have friends, go to the food court. There's also some really cool stores that don't exist anymore, one of which was the Warner Brothers store, probably one of my favorite stores of all time. Now, at the Warner Brothers store, one of the coolest things that they had was this hologram of, I think, Wile E. Coyote or something like that. I can't remember the details because it was so long ago, but I remember you could put your hand in it and it was a really, really cool effect. I always wanted to figure out how to do that and I really wanted to figure out how I could do that on my own. Recently, I ran into a YouTube video of somebody doing just this with a really small, looked like a prism, a cube of glass, and an ESP32 with a screen on it. And obviously, since it was an ESP32, I was getting to thinking, hey, this is something I'm interested in trying. I spent a ton of time researching, trying to find hardware for it, trying to find the right piece of glass, trying to figure out what that piece of glass was. Eventually, I actually ran into the company that made the one in the video. Now, he had printed his own little enclosure thing for it, but they actually had that made too. So I was able to go to fiberpunk.com and buy the entire kit. So kick back, relax, and let's take a look at it. All right, so. Here it is right now. It's got a neat little box, says Fiberpunk on it, and it got all my little greasy uh, fingerprints all over it. So once we open the box, you've got a bunch of cool stuff in here. So I'll show you each individual item. So right here, right here is the piece of glass. This is, I thought it was initially just a prism, but this is in fact what's known as a beam splitter. It's really hard to see, but there's actually a seam on this glass. It's effectively two prisms in one. It's a super cool piece of um, optical glass. Um, we'll show you how that works in a second. All right, next is the little enclosure that is 3D printed. Not enclosure, but little holder for it. Let's use my ham fists of ham to open this bag. Holy oh, crap, it's hard. Ah, got him. So. This is just a 3D printed um, little holder for it. It's actually a really nice 3D print too, but um, once we get all the parts unboxed, we'll show you how this goes together. Next up, we have the actual kind of meat and potatoes of the whole thing, which is the ESP32 and the screen. So we'll pop these out of here. Now I have, oh, spoiler alert, I have had this taken apart already, so I did plug the wire in. It's a super little fragile guy. So we've got the screen, which is a little square screen. And then all the way down here is this little teeny, teeny, tiny ESP32 with an SD card on it. Um, super cool little piece of uh, custom made electronics. And this actually does make this project a lot easier to make. And just in case you were wondering, it's actually an ESP32 Pico on board this little teeny, tiny guy. After that, they do uh, include a, what is this, a uh, USB-C cable and a brick for it. So let's consider it. Uh, I've got a hundred million of them, but you can never have too many, right? So let's go ahead and take our base plates. I don't know if that's what I'm calling it. And then we're gonna kind of finagle this guy, whoops, into here, flip it into the bottom. There's a slot that's not lining up at the moment. A uh, slot, do, 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 get in there. Can't even hear me anyway. Um, there's a slot for the uh, USB-C, get into. It is a tight fit. It's definitely a tight fit. It took me a little bit of wiggling around to get it in. So that's in. And you can tell because the USB port lines up. And now the hard part is getting the screen kind of on there nicely, which because I've done this before, I've got it kind of working a little bit better. Wiggle there, wiggle there. And then it kind of just sits in like so. So that's on there. And then this beam splitter prism is going to sit right up on top. So 
but let me fire it up, show you what it can do so far. Now, let me also explain to you what kind of the original purpose of this thing was. Um, the way they have it marketed is actually as an STL viewer for 3D prints. Like you could sit it next to your 3D printer and it'll actually show a 3D model of the STL and it will rotate around. I think there's even functionality for it to, tech, to send prints to the printer. However, I'm not 100% sure because that brings up one of the biggest struggles that I had with this project. Now, this did come pre-installed with the STL viewer on it, but what I wanted to do was put full motion video on it. So I had to figure out how to make that happen. Since I had seen other videos before, I knew it was possible. However, through the documentation, it made it incredibly difficult. I mean, like, incredibly difficult. I had to scrub through all their documents, find really obscure links to GitHubs that were, I believe, in Korean, and then I had to translate those into English and try to figure out how to make all that work. The software that it runs has tons of spelling errors. It's unintuitive. You have to go through multiple control panels to even find the places to transfer files. It wasn't easy. However, struggled with it for a long time and I did finally get it to work. So if you do want to get one of these, keep in mind, it may be a little bit of a struggle to get everything installed. That being said, I was able to install the AIO version of the firmware. And then I was able to move the files over convert some video files into animation files. They were MJPEGs? MJPEGs? I'm pretty sure that's right. Um, and yeah, now it works just fine. It's pretty cool. Let me show you. So here is our little guy here. One of the things to keep in mind is it actually is controlled by um, a tilt sensor. So you can see it changes. So you got to be really careful when controlling this thing. So let's get the beam splitter on there. There we go. And there we are. Now it's going to be hard to keep this thing in focus. So let me switch over to manual focus so I can show you exactly what this looks like. All right, here we go. Mind my mechanic hands and here we go. Now we're in focus so we can turn it to the side to switch through things. There's weather and then pictures and then here's video media. Whoops, let's try not to drop my prism. Let's see if we can get it to open. Yeah, see, this is it struggled with this for so long, figuring out how to get this to actually work. The accelerometer is extremely touchy and it makes life very difficult. Ah, come on. This is this is this is why I've taken so long to make this video. Ah, did we do it? We did it. Here we go. So now we have our cute little Miko dancer in there and you can still see through the prism and she's hanging out with us now. So it's actually really cool now that I actually can show you in focus. It's super, super neat. Um, but yeah, it, anything with a black background works best. So you can see that, you know, this is a black background. You can see through it. Whoops, there's another one. A little spicier version we have on there. Trust me, no nudity. Sorry, Google. It's a super cool idea. However, you know, it's kind of limited in for $35. It's small. You know what? I'm like, I can do better than that. And let's try it out. So you may ask how I'm going to make that happen. Well, I've come prepared. I have an old cell phone that I happen to use for Octoprint. I've got this four by six little picture frame, which I'm just going to use the glass from. And in typical talking Sasquatch fashion, I got some popsicle sticks and the old glue gun. Now, I know some of you are asking, hey, talking Sasquatch, why don't you do it the right way with an ESP32 and a screen? So obviously I do have the stuff to do it and I considered it. However, one of the challenges I've always run into with ESP32s is in order to make it really useful as a video player, you need to connect it to the um, SD card. And I haven't really found basically too many easy ways of doing that. So I decided for the sake of this video, we're gonna use something that's a little bit easier and a lot more powerful. Well, with the cell phone, we are actually going to be able to do a lot of really cool stuff with it. So when I'm done with this project, I'll probably just leave it on my desk as a um, like a see through movie viewer. So we'll see how it goes. So let's go ahead and crack open this thing. Actually, I have just the thing for it. This is my Civivi Elementum. Slice, slice. And we'll get this out of here. We got the surfactant, the trash. We've got plastic and we've got the rest of the stuff all of this is trash all we want is the piece of i think probably acrylic um so let's figure out 
Are we supposed to just bust this sucker out of here? If I break this, that would suck. Uh, um, ho hello? Uh, we got it. Ah, got him. Careful, actual glass. Nice. So here we have a piece of actual glass, and you can see it, it's actually reflective. That's what we're banking on. This will actually be pretty simple with it. So this effect is actually uh, known as Pepper's Ghost. It was commonly used back in the vaudeville days, I believe, where they would uh, use this effect to trick people into thinking that there were ghosts on stage and things like that. It's actually a really cool effect. Um, I've also seen a ton of people using it for things like Halloween decorations. You can use the same effect to make it look like there's something behind a window of your house or, you know, anything like that. So it's a really, really simple premise. All you really need is a screen and a reflective piece of glass. You can actually get one-way filters, which help a little bit, but I think for the, you know, the sake of our example today, this should work just fine. All right, so we've got the cell phone with the same video playing and my reflection in it. And then we've got our glass. And you can see that it works kind of just the same. Now we're gonna use our toothpicks, toothpicks, our popsicle sticks and some glue. And we're gonna make this a little bit more permanent and see how it goes. Gonna switch to this really awkward angle. And we've got our, our hot glue gun here. So we're just gonna kind of tack this up real quick. Don't try this at home or with anybody's cell phone that you actually care about. Ugh. Always use extra hot glue or the super hot kind. All right, that's kind of got it in place. Whoops, let me uh, go home on here before we get ourselves too messed up. All right, now that we're holding this all in place, this is gonna be a really long, awkward cut because I need to hold all this stuff kind of at the same time. Add a little bit more glue. FYI, this is no longer a cell phone I plan on using, but we're gonna give that just a second to dry so we can keep going on the, the popsicle stick side. Uh, this is ridiculous. All right, cool. So that's a little drier. Uh, we're just gonna throw some glue on this guy. Whoops, try not to get glue on the screen. That would suck. And then we're gonna gotta go around in here and throw a little bit of glue on the inside here. All right, that's one down. Put the glue gun down, hopefully it doesn't fall the floor. All right, rotated this guy around, and then we're gonna do the same thing on this side. So, get out of here, microphone. Actually, push that down. Good. Put that about here. Ugh. Man, left-handed is so much harder than right-handed when you're right-handed. All the obvious statements to make, that's the one I'm making. That's good. Blob all there. All right. So, whoops. Getting glue on everything. All right. Give it a second, and then we'll check back. All right. So that seems to be holding together okay. So let's just chop our sticks down. There's one. There we go, and that's two. So let's move the camera up and take a look at what we got. All right, so let's check out our final product. We've got our cell phone with the glass on it and the, uh, yeah, that actually looks pretty good. So let's fire it up and see if we can't get this working right. Uh, I may have glued some of the buttons. Luckily they're touch buttons, so I think we're gonna be okay. And let's go back to the video we were just watching. Full screen. All right. And let's see how this looks. Ads. Please watch mine. All right. So let's check this out. Grab my autofocus. Turn that off and see what's going on here. So as you can see, it's working as it's supposed to. Now, the one thing to note is that, yes, it is actually doubling the image. So what's going on is you're seeing the reflection off of both sides of the glass pane itself. Um, that's why people recommended when doing this to do a uh, the one way mirror idea so that it would only be reflecting off of one layer of the glass. However, this is a proof of concept and it does work. So, you know, that's kind of cool. Now, it's just a cool proof of concept. I know it's not the most practical thing in the world and it's not going to replace anything, but 
it's a cool project to do. And again, with the with the filtered glass on one side, with a you know adding an actual filter to it, um, it would look way better because I have seen these done before. So again, it's a cool proof of concept. I wanted to see if I could do it with you know some cheap stuff that is head kicking around. Now I know this isn't another Flipper Zero video, which is what I specialize in usually, but I thought this was a fun little project, something a little different, keep it you know original. Um, again, I've been struggling figuring out other cool stuff to do with Flipper. And I know there's some really cool new stuff coming out, so look forward to that. But for now, I thought it would be fun to make our own little hologram. So that brings us to our giveaway. So we're gonna be giving away a t-shirt. Now we've got them in multiple sizes and a couple different colors, so whoever wins gets to choose those. Um, one of AR, uh, AWOC's NRF24 boards, one of his Wi-Fi boards, and then a bag of prototyping boards. Also some stickers and other cool stuff. So if you'd like to win that, you definitely got to join the Discord, and that's where our giveaway is, and make sure you're subscribed to the channel. Just for clarity, once you've joined the Discord, you're going to want to hop into the broadcast channel, and then you'll see the giveaway, and there's going to be a little, like, megaphone icon underneath the giveaway bot. Click on that, and you'll be entered. Thank you so much for watching the video. Please make sure to like, comment, subscribe, turn on notifications to find out when I'm putting out videos, when I'm live streaming. I'm trying to put content out as much as I can. I've been struggling trying to figure out what's gonna be good content for you guys. So if you have any recommendations, let me know down below. I wanna thank Crunchy Peanut Butter and the other Patreon subscribers. Thank you so much for your continued support. You guys are absolutely awesome. As usual, you can see in the background here some more 3D generated art from the Cynthia bot right in our own Discord. It's a great bot. If you ever need to generate images, it's a really, really useful bot for it. Uh, it uses a bunch of different models. It's not just stable diffusion. It uses a ton of different stuff, tons of different options. So yeah, check it out and obviously have fun in the Discord. It's a great community. We love everybody that comes in there. Thank you guys so much. We're going to see you next time.